Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad everybody's here that's here. I basically just, uh, I'm, I'm picked up and, you can have a seat. Good to see every one of you. I, I, I picked up and took off and left the family at the ranch just to be here to minister to everybody tonight. And just because I, I just felt the, I felt the need and the urgency, you know, to see God's people step into the things of the Spirit. And, um, you know, so you know, I, I don't know where everybody is. I, I, maybe it didn't get announced. I don't know. But I know this. I know that there is a great need in the midst of God's people to step into the realms of faith so that the things of the Spirit, the things of heaven could be made manifest through our life. Now, there's a couple of things I want to say about, especially in terms of the school of the Spirit. The school of the Spirit is lit literally learning how to be led by the Holy Ghost. Learn how to let him, the teacher be made known to you. To, be, to come into a place where, I mean, the privilege of walking in the Spirit, to walking by the Spirit. Uh, fundamentally, you're going to have to be willing to believe that, that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, that God dwells in you. The 2 Corinthians chapter 6 is a reality for your life. That he touches through your hands, walks through your feet, yeah. and they're not, and, and moves through your, through your every dimension of your being. Now, the reality of it is, is you're not going to really understand what that looks like uh, unless you give yourself to reading the word. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you potentially may have wrong models around you. You may, um, you may have, you may, you know, may, you may even put manifestations in place of the teaching of the Holy Ghost and direction of the Holy Ghost. And I can tell you, there was this move of God, and it became, it became known as the Latter Rain Revival. But just before the Latter Rain Revival, there was this, this uh, other great healing revival that was taking place. And during this time, there was, uh, there was, a, there was this, the, these certain manifestations that would take place, and certain people would do stuff like this, you know. And it was very common in the Church of God. Somebody's now, the anointing's upon them, and their hand starts doing this, Okay. And it was a manifestation that suddenly became ex an expression that among some people, because they just really were emulating other folks, they didn't really know how to follow the things of the Spirit. And so they thought that, that somehow that was associated with giving a word of prophecy or, or the ministry of the Spirit. And that's what happens. People get stuck in manifestations. Actually, what the Holy Ghost does is, is majestic. It, it, what the Holy Ghost does is, is beautiful. It's, it's, there is nothing flaky about it. There's nothing really, I mean, you could say there are weird things about it. And you, you could say that there were weird manifestations uh, that the prophets had and ultimately were known as madmen. But the results of their actions always, result, re, re, always came to some majestic demonstration of the power of God. Are you with me? Look, so if we're stuck in some kind of arm waving expression, some kind of, you know, manifestation without the power and the glory of God, then what we're going to have is something that potentially can be a bring a reproach. It isn't, it isn't ultimately declaring the majesty and the splendor of the Lord. So people may, you know, say, well, of course, that, that tongues is weird and strange. Now, and, and of course, we can, we can perfectly... We can understand that, you know. Uh, however, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in situations, I've been, uh, uh, and I really like to utilize this particular example because, it, because I, I think it speaks volumes. I was with two people who basically in science are, you know, they're, they're in, the, in the who's who's club in science. One of them is a geneticist and one of the, one of the person was a molecular biologist. I was going down the road with them and we were going out to eat. I was working for a startup company that was out of Vancouver, Canada. It started up here in San Diego, California. We were going down the road. They were taking uh, these, these, um, these uh, sale business guys were taking us out to eat. And um, the, these two famous guys, the geneticists and molecular biologists, were down. They were visiting. And so, I mean, I just pretty much, I was in the back seat. I forgot who I was at for a moment. And I just bought us to get I didn't know Began to come out of my out of my spirit. I was just staring out the window and looking at the beautiful scenery. And pox to Talamea hot to tell that hit me. And the guy, the, the molecular, the, the geneticist that was sitting beside of me, very famous guy, said, "That's beautiful language. What language is that?" And I turned to him. I said, "Well, that's the heavenly one." He says, "But what's that?" I said, "Well," and I began to tell him a little bit. He didn't want to hear too much. You, you know, 
let's talk genetics. Let's go back to genetics. But he said, but, uh, you know, I don't know about all that, but that's, that certainly is something very different about that, something, something very beautiful. So tongues doesn't necessarily have to even be strange, huh? It is actually a sign. Did you know that it was a sign to the unbeliever? Isn't that strange? You'd think it'd be a sign to the believer. <laughs> it is a sign to the unbeliever. Now, I've watched people get stuck in the areas in tongues that really isn't beautiful. It isn't majestic. It is kind of just, it's odd. It's awkward. You know, that the tongues can become like a, you can, can become aggravating, you know, <laughs> like a tinkling cymbal and a sound of brass. Why? Because there's no love in it, huh? Because it becomes an expression. It becomes an expression that's not filled with the glory of the Holy Ghost. I believe this. I believe that you cannot speak in, another, in other tongues unless the Holy Ghost gives you utterance. But I also believe that the Holy Spirit would always be giving us utterance should we learn how to step over into that kind of fellowship with him, that kind of living out his life. I get to live out the life <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. I mean, just think about that. It almost like sounds like blasphemy, you know. But I get to live out the life of the Holy Ghost because he's living in me, and that's what it means to live in the Spirit. Yeah. So I'm writing this stuff down for you because unless you believe, surely you will not be established. How many of you just recently read that? Unless you believe. And God was so desperate about getting Ahaz into believing. He said, just ask me. I'll work a miracle for you. I'll give you whatever sign you want. Whatever sign you want. Because if you're going to have the miracles of God in your life, you're going to have to believe. So what, what is it going to take to you to believe? What do you, want to, what do you want me to do? And, you know, that's pretty intense. The Father is so willing to bring us to a place of belief. We're going to have to understand. And you can't walk around and say, I did it in the flesh. And, oh, I'm just a miserable worm. And, oh, when am I going to ever get saved? And when am I ever going to get over myself? And ever move in the boldness and the authority of faith. It ain't going to work. You're going to have flakehood. You're going to come to flakehood that way. You're not going to come to majesty and glory and honor and praise. You're not going to. Father allows us to go through things so that our faith might be found in the praise and the honor and glory. Huh? Father wants the dimension and the activity of our lives to be found into praise and to honor and to glory. And so one of the things that, you know, in the school of the Spirit, it, one of the most important things is you, you are all doing it now. You find that you have a daily habit of the Word. And I don't believe that it should just be random kinds of readings. I believe it should be systematic. You know what I'm saying? There's different systematic kinds of readings. Now, there are times where I'll just study one prophet for a while, you know, and I have different translations. I, you know, I have uh, translations like I uh, have translations of Jeremiah done by different Jewish scholars, you know, that are experts in the Hebrew language and things of that nature. So, but systematic reading where you're always reading from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. Why? Because you're in the school of the Spirit. You want to understand what the Holy Ghost does. You want, if there's anybody you want to imitate, imitate Ezekiel, imitate Isaiah, imitate Elijah, imitate Paul, imitate Jesus. Do it the way they did it. Check, pick, because it won't be long, and you'll start, you'll start picking up on different details. You're gonna only, what's going to stand out to you right now is what you have the capacity to receive. Wherever you are at emotionally in God is what is going to be real to you. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of, well, I read that. You read the same sentence over and over again, don't remember what you read. Have you ever done that? Well, why don't we read that again? They can almost write it out, you know? Write it out, and, the, you know, you start meditating like that, so things that start happening. But by and large, you don't do that. Otherwise, you're not going to get through your reading in an hour a day, right? And you want to have that, or you always want to have a general overview reading going on. But, but what's going to happen as you do, as you, as you give yourself to the reading of the Word, you're going to get get. You're going to get skilled. You're going to get good at it, okay? You, you're, you're, going to get, you're going to get fluent at it, just like anything else, uh, you know? It's, it, the knowledge of God is the hardest subject in the Bible, hardest subject in the Bible, yet it's the easiest one. It's a paradox, okay? It's been given so that babies can understand it, but it has the insights to all that he does and why he does it and the way he does it. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah. So I'm telling you right now, from babyhood to the full maturation of the fullness of God, there's something for everybody there. Amen. <laughs> and now as we grow, that's why, it's, that's why the book is always new. It's always new because next year you're going to grow. You, if you are, you're either going to grow or you're going to be backslidden. I mean, you're going to either slide back or move forward. I mean, you're going to grow. If you're alive and you're living, you're going to grow. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And um, so, you know, and that's even, you know, when you start again, I mean, because this, you know, basically we're over half, we're, we're you know, what, one day, 54, 53, 54, something like that. So we're well over half, the halfway mark. And so, you know, it is not going to be long and the 90 days is going to be up and you're going to start over again and going to start at some other pace. Maybe you're going to slow down a little bit so that you can read a little slower, okay? Because maybe you want to, maybe you want to spend an hour a day reading half the amount of material, right? So, but this is the school of the spirit because you're not going to, you're not going to get the vocabulary of the learned until you begin to read it over and again. Until it's there, it becomes a part of you. It leaps up off the page. Father's not going to be able to really talk to you and tell you, this is what's holding you back. This is what's standing in your way. This is why you can't function in this gift or that gift or the word of knowledge or flow in prophecy because you've got this stuff going on. And he does that because he does that as we're reading his word, right out of his word. It just comes, he just does it in such a miraculous way. He just comes and lays it on us. Hallelujah. And uh, we, he, gives us, he gives us whatever we're able to receive. You know what? He's not going to give if we're spiritually, and you just have to understand this, and don't be offended by it. And if you are, just slap yourself. But at any rate, if you're, if you're a little child, it, he's not going to give you, cut you off a piece of steak and stick it in your mouth. You're going to choke on it. He's going to nurture you. He's going to give you milk. Hallelujah. And then... When you become full age, ha, 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 there's some strong meat for you. Then every verse of scripture that was milk for you becomes actually strong meat. It is a miracle. It is a miracle of miraculous proportions. And it's all right there. God, the Holy Ghost, is doing exactly what the Word is saying. He, the Holy Spirit, is agreeing everything with the Word, Christ Jesus. <laughs> he, the Holy Spirit, is the one who makes alive everything that the Word of God declared. The Word of God speaks it. The Holy Ghost makes it manifest. That's the way you see it in Genesis chapter 1. It won't be too long. You'll be able to see it very clearly. God says, and the Holy Ghost moves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know... Faith is the cornerstone to everything that the Holy Spirit does within the framework of the manifestations of His power. Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith. And so the Word of God delivers to us faith. The Word of God becomes something that is alive on the inside of us. His Word is spirit in His life. It's not black ink on white paper. It's so hard to convince people of this. But just keep listening because I'll keep repeating myself till it gets activated. Believe me. I, you know, this is the good news about the Lord. You know, He, he just keeps... <laughs> he understands our frame. So He just keeps telling us over and over and over again till we, yeah, all of a sudden the lights come on and... Wow, I've never heard that before. Yeah, you've heard it about 5,000 times. But praise God, you're hearing it now. You know, you're really hearing it. Something comes alive and on the inside of us. God gives us the capacity to hear. He retains, listen to this, listen to this. He retains all right to revelation. He retains all rights to revelation. He gives unto us. You think about Paul's address to the church at Ephesus. He spoke in no loftier terms to anyone that he wrote to. He spoke to the elite when he spoke to those at Ephesus. He talked to those who, were, who had all spiritual gifts, that were, were blessed with all spiritual gifts, you know, in, in, in the heavenly realm. And then he says to them, I pray that God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him so that you can understand the working of his power. Here we are here tonight to understand the working of his power. You're, there's a, and you know what? But, but Papa told me, he said this. He said, I want, you to, I want you to get really focused now on teaching people righteousness so that they can come and learn righteousness. Because the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Listen, the unrighteous will not only not inherit the kingdom of heaven in the life to come, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven right now in this life in terms of interacting with that realm of divine glory. There are things going on in people's lives that they continue to allow. They continue to allow the works of unrighteousness, wrong attitudes, wrong opinions, wrong expressions, shuts down the activity of the Spirit of God in their lives. So that's why the Word of God is going to be teaching us. The Word of God corrects us. The Word of God instructs us. The Spirit of the living God comes and teaches us and guides us by the same kinds of instructions of instructions and directions. You know, uh, Paul says, as I received from the Lord, even so I give it unto you, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, said, take, eat this in my body, which is broken for you. And likewise, likewise after that, he had supper, he took the cup also and said, this is my, my blood in the new covenant, 
which is given to you for the remission of sins. And then he goes on in that context in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and begins to tell people, listen, you're going to have to receive instruction. Otherwise, you're going to get sick and you're going to die because you're going to, you're going to eat and drink the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ unworthily. You're going to eat and drink damnation to your soul. So you listen to me. You need to be corrected. That's what he's saying. Because when you judged of the Lord, when you chasten the Lord, you judged of the Lord so you won't be condemned. And see, this, we've got to understand this. The Lord wants to teach us the ways of righteousness. This is the school of the Spirit. Fundamentally, God the Holy Ghost is teaching us righteousness. So that I desire, O Lord, with my soul, I desire you in the night. And with my spirit, I seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, then the inhabitants of the world shall learn righteousness. Well, that's about you and me. That's about our relationship with the Lord. It's about our hunger and our thirsting. It's about having our passions directed in the right way. The Word of God produces faith. Faith is the cornerstone for every manifestation of the power of God, every moving and, and, and working of, of the power of God. Unless you believe, you'll never be established in this. As long as you're believing something false, as long as you're holding on to your own identities, to your own purposes, you've got to make a transition. You're going to have to believe that Jesus looks at somebody who's not worthy like you and me, and he says to us, he said, go, uh, cast out devils, raise the dead, open up the blind eyes, to, to command those who are deaf to hear, freely you've received, freely give. Matthew 10, 8. Come on now, you think about that. Because how, how? Because reality of it is, as long as I'm freely, as long as I'm freely receiving, I can freely give. As soon as I'm having to earn something, as soon as I know, as soon as I'm not feeling worthy of something, forget about it. Shuts down. That's why I I have seen people who are young in the Lord or just new in the things of God get all excited about the things of the Spirit if they're around. Miracle signs and wonders and faith teaching and don't have a bunch of other people. Because a lot of times, I'm going to say this. A lot of times you'll have faith teaching coming from the pulpit. And you got a bunch of doubt teaching coming from the pews. You, you know what I'm saying? Here the faith teaching goes out uh, from the pulpit. When I'm sitting up here in the pulpit, then you walk out of the house with the people that are in the pews. And they're speaking doubt to you. And it just like, knows, I mean, it doesn't. It, it, if it would just neutralize things, that would be one thing. It doesn't. It sets the people back. And, you know, <laughs> If there's anything folks need to understand is how to be fearful over what you have to say to other people because your counsel can either destroy people or it can make them alive. It can move them forward or it can set them back. Huh? It can. Come on now. I'm, Papa's going to hold. That's why Father holds us accountable for every word that we speak. And really, that is the context. Even things that you say in jest, even the things that you say just jokingly, God's going to hold us accountable for it because it's really the definition of that that is the counsel that we're giving. It, it's the there's things that we're declaring. When the things that we're saying is right and wrong, what's good and evil, what Father would have us to do, what we believe or don't believe, what we think God is doing or shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Is, you're going to have to start speaking according to this word if you want to stay in the school of spirit, if you want to move forward in the school of spirit. You just listen to me. You learn how to prophesy by reading the word of God. Um, you learn how to move in the spirit of prophecy by reading the word of God, first and foremost, because you believe in prophecy, because you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. You already got that. Here you got now this activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now you give yourself to reading the word, and all of a sudden that begins to activate a deeper realm and expression of God in your life. So it's always going to be together, the Spirit, the expression of the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. They are going to work together to grow you. It's this desire, the sincere milk of the Word of God, the meat of God's Word that's going to give you uh, that strength and shinu and ability and, and that water from heaven. You speak to the rocks and give me water, what are you going to get? You're going to get Holy Ghost expression. Amen. Praise God. And you need some water with that milk. Believe it or not, you need some water with that milk. Ask the babies. They need some water with that milk. Amen. You don't think you need a water to wash down the milk, but you do. <laughs> and, you, and, and you really know you need the water to wash down the meat. And we call it a masa balanea pratite. So that it becomes a, so it can become assimilated in your body. So that it can be properly digested. And that will give you a stomach ache. <laughs> Ha, ha, hallelujah. You do you hear the simplicity of the truth of God's word. I, I can give tonight because I freely, freely receive. I, I can flow in the Holy Ghost because I'm not under pressure. <laughs> I, I can do all these things because I have a confidence with God that has been birthed out of an experience with him. An experience that has come to pass in my life through a relationship because I want to know him. And he wants me to know him. 
because I could want to know him. And, uh, and if he didn't want me to know him, I just wouldn't be, you know, no one would be possible, wouldn't be possible for anybody to have any interaction with him. He, we get to know him because he wants us to know him. Isn't that beautiful? And I, I pray that you're excited about it. So I'm, a, I'm gonna, I just want you to understand. I mean, I am devoted in 2015 to teaching people righteousness. I mean, the Lord told me he wants me to skill people in righteousness. And he wants me to rebuke every person that I see walking in, in, in unrighteousness. He wants me to rebuke them. And so I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm going to start giving people more, as God tells me, I'm going to give people more word of knowledge. Because a lot of times, because what happens is I function in the word of knowledge. And in every meeting, I have the word of knowledge. I look at people's lives, I can see what's going on. I know what's happening. Nothing's hidden. And you shouldn't, be con you, sh you shouldn't be too shamed about that or concerned about that because Father knows. Huh? So why hide? You say, oh, Lord, let the spotlight of heaven shine upon my soul. God, so I know what it is you want of me, you want of me and what I need to do to change so that I can cooperate more with you. Well, behold. And so what happens is we ministering and, you know, we'll be, we'll be you know, I'll be ministering. Flowing in the, I'll be flowing in, 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 in the word of prophecy and the word of knowledge and the word of revelation. And I look and I see something go on in somebody's spirit. And usually, you, if, if I, if it is such a, it's such an impact on the meeting that either I've got to turn away and not look at them or I've got to address it, okay? And, you know, your, your, conscience, can be, your conscience can be clear, but the Holy Ghost can still be grieved. People can get into ruts of unrighteousness because they don't even know it's unrighteousness and then begin to participate with things they think is the mind of the Spirit, and it's not. I'm going to give you an example of familiar spirit stuff, and you've got to be able to recognize familiar spirit stuff and stay away from it, okay? Because as soon as you begin to engage with people giving familiar spirits, you're going to come under the influence of that spirit, and if you're not careful, you will imitate it. I won't, there's, some people, there's many people that have come here to this place and said that I didn't allow other people to function and operate in the word of knowledge. I didn't allow them to function and operate in the word of knowledge because their model was a, a familiar spirit. They couldn't see that, and neither were they able to hear me tell them that that was their problem. So I just let it go because I just, I just wait. Let the word of God correct them. If they can be corrected, the word of God will correct them. And so I just preached the word. I just laid out there. You're going to hear me preach the word, not my ideas. I'm going to preach the word. And so I, was, and, and I had a classic example happen recently where I had these two people come into my office and they were telling me about what they wanted to do. I said, no, no, you can't do that. And they said, well, why can't we do that? I said, well, because here's what's going to happen. One, two, and three. This is what will happen. And I looked at them. I said, are you ready for this consequence? Are you ready for this consequence? Are you ready for this consequence? And it was, no, no, no. Well, this is what will happen if you do this. So what happens is this one person takes off, and they go to this place, and uh, they go for a, uh, this conference. It's a prophetic conference, and now they're going to go get, uh, really, I'm just going to say it, a reading. Yeah, that's what, really what it comes down to. They're going to go, and they're going to get a word of knowledge from these people that, uh, you know, if it, it, it just, just goes on, okay? They're going to get a word for a knowledge from, from these people. So this person actually clicked the tape, clicked their little um, recorder so that they could send it to me so that I could hear everything, okay? Because they wanted to submit it to me, okay? Fine, yeah. They want to get my opinion. They didn't want to submit it to me. They didn't want to get my opinion. Because until, until you learn how the anointing of the Holy Ghost works, you, you, get, you want my opinion, you're going to get my, that's about all that you're going to get. It's my opinion. You submit something and the Holy Ghost might speak. Uh-huh. Because we, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to elevate God beyond the human realm. <laughs> that may be difficult, but we're going to have to go ahead and elevate God above the human realm. <laughs> and stop thinking it's all just human and it's just, you know, what do you think, what I think, you think, I think, we all think. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to thank you with, with us too? But nonetheless, here we are back to this situation. And so in this word of knowledge, the person actually gave the very name of the other person that they wanted to enter in a relationship, gave the name, and then described the person, and then declared that it was a good thing for them to get together. Praise God, it was all blessed by the Lord. It's a familiar spirit speaking. Mm -hmm. All in the name of Jesus. All under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. So, <laughs> they said that, they, you know, it was said to me, and I said, I don't agree with any of it. 
I'm not impressed by any of it. And left it there. Well, they decided to carry on the merry way. And then within a very short period of time, all three things happened that I told them would take place. And they happened actually quicker than I thought they would. I thought it would take several months. It took several weeks. Now, what I'm saying is, I, I'm just telling you about something that's continually going on. And I want, the, I don't want, I, I want you to understand. This is why I say, number one, first and foremost, you go, if there's ever a time you need to give yourself to reading the Word, it's now. And stop listening to the counsel of men. If there's ever a time you want to understand that the value of this anointing and the way the function, the anointing functions, is out of this relationship and having freely received you freely give but it's always going to be in the context of it, it being submitted amen and uh, you know if the person hadn't gone sought another word they would have you know maybe may you could say well the Lord put a lying spirit in their mouth because they went and sought counsel huh of the prophets of Baal huh you could say that you could say, well, maybe the person does usually have a word of knowledge, but at that moment in time, they had a familiar spirit. I believe that when you walk right with God, you know the difference, and you won't even give your members to it. But what happens is people got a mixture in their life, and they believe they can live in the world and at the same time live in heaven, and thus they have all kinds of trafficking going on in their life. I'm not interested in that. I'll be a Baptist. I'll just go be a Episcopalian or something. I'm not interested in, in spirit traffic. I'm not interested in spirit traffic. Okay, if I don't want spirit traffic in my life, I'm going to, when I say spirit traffic, I'm talking about the spirits of this world, spirits of darkness. <laughs> then I'm going to have to give myself to learning the word of God. I'm going to have to give myself to learning righteousness because then I can say no to evil. I can say, no, I'm not having that evil, unholy thing in my life because it's going to open up the door to other unholy things while I'm standing here going, thank you, Jesus, or supposedly listening to the word. Things are going to be filtering in. That are, have nothing to do with God. I've, I mean, I'm telling you. I'm, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy things go down in my life. And what, one of the things that, that watching all the crazy stuff go down in my life has caused me to, to, to settle out on this. Lord, I want it to be real. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what you need to take me through. I just want it to be pure. I, do, I want it to be genuine. I'm not going to allow any motives that says, oh, my ministry will grow if I would just go ahead and give more people word of knowledge. I've had people come. I've had people in ministry come to me and say, listen, what you do is when people come in, just go ahead and give them a word. I'm not doing that. Just go ahead and give them a word. Everybody wants a word from heaven. Just go ahead and give them a word. And then they're going to come. They're going to come back. There's no way. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost stir me on the inside. And I'm going to, more, more importantly, what is the most important word to give? It's the Bible. Not tell, oh, listen, I know God and I understand you was really went through a terrible and difficult time. That works for everybody. <laughs> Everybody's gone through a terrible and difficult time. Huh? And it just gives them generalized statements. I can teach you how to do that. We won't even have to have all these lessons. I can teach you how to do that in like one night and you're good to go. I can give you about five things to say that are general declarations that almost fit everybody and primarily that you got it. And you just stay with that. And now what's going to happen is every once in a while, then uh, you're going to be a candidate for a familiar spirit. And then you're going to start being able to get actually words and addresses pinned on the thing. No, no, thank you. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. No, thank you. I'm not making merchandise out of men. No, thank you. I'm not interested in impre impressing men. I'm impre interested in impressing God. Hallelujah. Father is impressed with truth. That's what he's impressed with. Open up the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps my truth may enter in. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> hallelujah. That's it. I, we've got a place of entrance that we want ministered unto us. Well, if you look in Second Peter chapter 1, what does the Lord say? He said, it, he said you've been, look, you've been called to glory and virtue. Wow, that's powerful because you begin to start defining glory. And that's all the splendor and the majesty and the, and the working of his mighty power. And virtue, oh, that can also be a, a, a connected with 
the, the, the flowing forth of power, which is a flowing forth of power through purity or an authority through purity. And then what he does is he lists out and he says, okay, seeing as that you, this is who you are, this is what you're called to be, and you've been given the divine nature, which has caused you now to be separate, having escaped, having been delivered, and everybody's excited about escaping, not going, oh, man, this is boring. I want to go back and play around in the world. I want to go back night clubbing. I want to go back and all the other disgusting interactions with demon spirits that leave me feeling miserable and empty on the inside. Huh? And nobody wants that. Amen. So, no, you're rather, I've been called to this realm of divine nature, which is uh, where we're in. I've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust because lust is, lust is, lust is, is a realm of death. It's a realm of total destruction. And now, because I am in this realm, the Lord says, okay, now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give all attendance to learning righteousness. That's what he's saying. He said, I want you to take it, add to your faith virtue and to virtue godliness. And, and he goes through the list of how do you and I now learn how to behave ourselves and the character and the manner and the disposition of Almighty God. That fundamentally, I'm not looking to myself to do it. I'm looking to the power of the Holy Spirit that has been given to me to ultimately live out all the dimensions of his life. And so with in that he says now he says now I will open a door to you you read that what is that verse 10 I will open up a door to you I will give you minister to you show you give you spirit of wisdom and revelation I'll activate within you that divine knowledge that inspiration so that you now begin to um, enter into this realm uh, unlimited realm and dimensions of the kingdom of God pretty powerful stuff right eh? This is the school of the spirit. I don't want any other spirits. Uh, the discerning of spirits is a very important gift. There have been many great men of God who's lived and are dead now that have lived over the past 200 years, and they said in these last days that the most important gifting in the church is going to be the gifting of the discerning of spirits. All these things work by faith. You're not going to have discerning of spirits if you allow criticism in your, in your heart, in your mind, in your thinking. If you allow it offense, it will shut down the spirit. You won't function to get to discerning of spirit. You'll begin to function in spirits. Discerning of, the, the discernment of spirits instead of the discerning of spirits. <laughs> the discernment of spirits or the suggestion of spirits. It will, it will pollute the whole activity. If, you, if you're not giving your members, if you're not yielding your members to unrighteousness, if you're not yielding your members to this realm of division and strife and criticism and suspicion, and you shut that down and you've learned righteousness and you consecrate it to the realms of the Holy Spirit so the Spirit of the Lord can teach you now, all of a sudden, you're go, you will hear things concerning people's lives, and it will, and you will be fundamentally able now to impact them. So a dear person came to me the other day, and they said, hey, so and so, so this person walked into the church, and when they walked in the church, I was immediately grieved, and I heard in my spirit, I heard pornography. So what should I do? And, um, and, it, and the reality of it is, is the person is in the school of the spirit. They are, they are virtuous in their thoughts. They are full of love. They don't have criticism. I've never heard them speak evil of a person one single time. If you speak bad of other people, mark it. You're not in the school of the spirit. You're in the school of men. And you're going to shut that down because it's going to keep you from flowing in this realm. Understand me. And, if you did, and, and then if you did step into a gifting, it's going to have a mixture to it. And it ain't going to take long, and you're going to be taken over by lies that are just nothing but evil reports with some... Satan has information on people. Huh? He can, Satan can create a, a palm reader, doesn't tell the future, she creates it. Because if you believe a lie, you'll be damned. She'll create it. Someone who does those kinds of things, tarot card readers, they don't tell you the future, they create it. They speak a lie. And if you buy into that, say, oh, this is not my future. I'm going to marry a fat man who's bald headed. It comes to pass. It's producing the future. It's a, it's a, it's, it is the declaration. Uh, it's the declaration of Satan. This is his future that he's planned for you. Huh? I don't, I'm not interested. Are you either? I'm not, huh? Praise God. I don't marry no fat man, bald headed. Amen. 
Huh? I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I want none of the suggestions, not from a tarot card reader, not from a palm reader, and not from an imagination in my head. Because I created something that doesn't even exist and usually happens out of our own insecurities. Nonsense, man. God wants to pull us over in a realm called faith, give us an identity, fill us up with such confidence and boldness and security that we don't need anything else. I mean, talk about this is far beyond self-worth. This is God worth. Hallelujah. Christ worth. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost worth. Or how's your self worth? It's soaring in the divine power of God. Hidden in Christ Jesus. Listen to me now. The school of the Spirit is all about giving you and I an identity of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, persuading us of who God has made us when he renewed us in his image and his likeness. Ha, ha, ha. And filled us with his very own person. So that, he says, fathers come to dwell on the inside of you. Jesus come to dwell on the side of, inside of you in the Holy Ghost. My goodness, that is the cornerstone of every dimension of the moving of God to believe in such great love. We say, well, look at the love of God. He came in and he, and he was born for, for us in a manger. He left all the riches of heaven, became poor for our sakes. He then suffered the rejection of men. He was crucified at Calvary's cross, went down in hell. Oh, what great love. And it's all true. But hey, it even gets bigger than that. He loves you so much he's come to well with you. He saved you not waiting for you to do the job first so that he can come and finish up. Do the finish up. Because you can only take you so far. You can't take you nowhere. I can't take myself nowhere. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Papa wants us to believe that what he has done for us. It's just an amazing love. It's an amazing love. Oh, what love. And it just, I have to yell it out because it's coming out that way. Oh, my, what love. It's so big. It's big. It's big on the inside of me. It's a shout. It's a thunderous shout. I don't run around because it's a Pentecostal thing. I run around when I can't stand still. I try my best to stand still for people. Sometimes I'm like, I'm ready to just, because of the power of God, I'm ready to just jump up and touch the ceiling there. Because it's, it's the, 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 the glory of heaven surging through my body is more than I can even can contain. Huh? Hallelujah. It shuts down electronics. <laughs> Charges up cell phones that are dead, that are in your pocket. You flow in the Holy Ghost. Just stay flowing in the Holy Ghost. There. One of the things, one of the messages and doctrines and a knowledge of the Lord that is being lost to the church is living in divine health. There's no problem living in divine health. Just keep flowing in the anointing. Huh? I've been around a lot of people with sickness and flu over the past two weeks. I don't have a bit of it. And I have a purpose that every one that I even got near, that the, my overshadowing would heal them. Amen. That they just be healed. Hallelujah. I'm not going to keep this for myself. I'm going to give it away. Hallelujah. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. And people, I've heard different people say, you know, I'm... Well, God's Father's given me an anointing. I'm going to be jealous about it, and I'm going to hang on to it, lay hands on no man suddenly. There's only one verse of Scripture like lay hands on nobody suddenly. Come on. The Lord said, freely give. Come on, give it. Don't withhold. Come on, give it. Freely give. Father's freely given. You're sitting around waiting for someday. Father, the gospel isn't. This is the gospel of someday. This is not the gospel of someday. This is the gospel of today. Now. Now, it is the now gospel. It's the now good news. It's the now activation of the Holy Ghost. It's the now privilege. Hallelujah. Once again, that's why we'll see people early on in their walk with the Lord in that zeal. And then just, wow, God loves me, man. And, you know, the kind of zeal that you're like driving down the road and you stick your head out. The wind in your home and people on the sidewalk. Jesus loves you. Ah, praise God. You know, that kind of zeal. That kind of love. That kind of announcement of the truth. I, I've watched where people just begin to see, you know, miracles, signs and wonders, have words of knowledge come to me and say, wow, I, I can't believe what I was, I was just talking to a person. And I begin to tell them their whole life. And I was shocked and they were shocked. Yeah, freely you receive, freely give. And then as time goes on, you start going through the problems. You start analyzing yourself. You don't like yourself as much anymore because you felt God. And then you start spiraling down into 
having to somehow get Jesus to come back and die for you all over again so you can feel better. You got to get past all that. You got to understand his mercy and his love and his care. How that Christ Jesus has provided for us a blood, his blood that would cleanse us and keep this relationship intact so long as our heart's sincere and honest before him. And we want to be in this light. We want to walk in the light as he's in light. In other words, we want to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. We want to live by the spirit. We want to be taught by the Holy Spirit. When we recognize that Jesus said, hey, he, took those, he took the 12 disciples apostles and he began to mentor them he began to mentor them like elijah and mentored elisha i love the day that elisha he, he elisha never as far as we know and i'm pretty certain i'm i think this is very accurate to say it, it, this is on the web isn't it it's coming through on the web i hope it is huh it is not coming through on the web okay unfortunate that's the way it goes okay but at any rate elisha and there's people wanting to see this right now there's people that were we're, we're set up to see this tonight. So I want, I, want to, I want you to understand that we've somehow got to get past this problem. Okay, but nonetheless, I'm gonna leave it because that wasn't my responsibility. I'm doing my responsibility, amen. And, I, and, and so j just pray with us that everything that God wants to do through our lives and through this ministry won't be hindered anymore, that everybody will find their place in, in service and ministry and that you know those things that God wants us to profit in and, and, and develop and will ultimately be realized by all of us because we're going to do what we're supposed to do. And the prophet that we wanted to see people say, transform by the power of God, grow and mature in the things of the Spirit of God. But back to what I was saying, one of the beautiful things I love about Elisha, you know, he, was, he had so much going for him, and, you know, he could have sulked. He could have said, my goodness, I don't know how to do nothing around here, man. I had it all going for me, and I've been serving you, Elijah, for all these years, and my goodness, and I could have, you can understand how much money I could have made by now, how big my ranch could be, and you know, on and on and on. We didn't hear any of that from Elisha. What we hear from Elisha is just silence. And that means that he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. Huh? Silence means you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But one day, he got his wish. One day, when the mantle fell, he cried out, Lord God of Elijah, show yourself right now. And he struck the water with the mantle. He is asking Father to show himself on his behalf now. The same God that there was a, uh, moving at the command of Elijah, at the word of Elijah, at the prayer of Elijah. I want you to show yourself to, have, to, being, to be here with me. This is the school of the Spirit. Jesus has the 12 apostles with him like that. The 70 others also. He's showing them how to function in the anointing. He's telling them how to walk in the anointing. He's telling them, basically, he brings it to crescendo when he says, let me show you how to minister to one another. Wash each other's feet because that's what I do for you. Huh? I want you to lay out. I want you to learn how to serve. You're never going to really understand anybody until you serve them. You understand that right now. All the rest of it is going to be a bunch of speculation. Huh? It's going to be a bunch of man ideas. You know nothing. Have no insight till you serve them. No insight till you love them. No insight till you hook up with the Holy Ghost in that realm. Because he's the only one who can show us what's really going on. All the rest of it is just perceptions that is really, by and large, just filled with all kinds of deceptions and personal opinions. And, and you don't want to distill knowledge from what you can figure out, from what you can rationally and logically think. You want to have insight as the Holy Spirit shows us and gives to us it, that ability to understand and to know what's really going on. He's the only one who knows what's really going on. He's the only one who really knows the hearts of all men. And so Jesus says to us, he says, listen, I'm going to go away. And I'm going to send you another comforter. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's going to be with you just like I'm with you. He is going to actually do a work that is going to, to be, in, and I'm going to say this loosely, is going to be better than the one I'm doing because he's going to expedite it. He's going to make the work faster because I've got many things to tell you, but you can't understand them. You don't have the capacity to understand them. You don't, there, there's got to be changes that go on in the depths of your being. For you to, able to be able to understand him. When he comes, he's going to be able to speak to you spirit to spirit. 
He's going to be able to speak right into the realms of your understanding. He's not going to talk to you from the outside. He's going to talk to you from the inside. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's going to open up your eyes. See, Jesus on the road to Emmaus, you know, they are wondering, oh, we thought he was the Christ. We thought he was the king of the kings and the Lord of lords. We, we thought he was the promised Messiah. And then Jesus shows up. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Oh, uh, well, you know, did you, you what? You, you hear about this great prophet? And, and then tell me. Yeah, there was this great prophet. And uh, Jesus walked alongside them. They didn't even recognize them. Right? Because they're on their grief. They're all bound. They can't see. When you get, you, can you get emotionally compromised, you can't see. And so, and so he, then he begins, he begins to declare the word of God and tell them how that, well, no, you don't understand He's telling them, let me show you in the Word of God. No, he was the Messiah. And this is how I'm going to show you. He, he was supposed to suffer and die. He declared to them how the Christ would come and suffer and die for them. And they still didn't get it. But, you know, they're going, wow, this is, this, wow, this is, makes a lot of sense. You know, and, uh, and bottom line of it is he opened up their understanding so that they could, he gave them the ability to see and understand and know so that they could realize what was spoken in the prophets concerning him so that they could begin to understand how that they were to cooperate with what God wanted to do. But then he was revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. As soon as, as, soon as he broke the bread, as soon as he reached out and gave them communion. And oh, the communion speaks so much of the school of the spirit. Huh. Where we declare, we discern his body. We declare that we live by him, that we... We are one cup. We drink from the same cup. Mm. So we live by his flesh, by his body, for his flesh is meat indeed. His very inspiration, his life-giving power is with us even in a greater way than the manna that was there every day that you could go pick up in the morning. More, morning bread the last three times. A, morning bread for three times a day. You know, I... I I want to teach people how to move in the Holy Ghost all the time. I want to teach people how to pray without ceasing. But you know what? you never going to pray without ceasing until you praise the Lord seven times a day like the psalmist said. David said, I praise him seven times a day. And that's every two hours. You stop and praise him. You start doing, you're going to have measurable things then you might actually go ahead and move on forward somewhere about getting into a place of praying without ceasing. Uh, and, and we'll stop playing imaginary games, huh? We'll stop playing make-believe and be careful because well, some people are lying. <laughs> they're just lying. They're lying and they know they're lying. And nobody tells them that all liars that have their part in the lake of fire. And I'm telling you right now, it'd be terrible to end up in the lake of fire lying about praying without ceasing. <laughs> it'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. <laughs> Just tell the truth. At all costs, tell the truth. Huh? Praise God for the truth. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is going to always work, hook up with. He's the spirit of truth. He's not going to hook up with a fantasy, a lie, a make-believe, a sorrow. He's not going to come down and, 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 and invade and, and, and your suffering and sorrow and comfort you. He's going to say, rise up. Come up here. Come up hither. <laughs> he, he, he's not seated together with us in earthly places. We're seated together with him in the heavenly realm. Amen. It's a big, gigantic difference. It's the school of the Spirit. You had to rise up from your prison. Have you ever read Pilgrim's Progress? You should read it. There's a lot of insight to it. Why sit I here so long in this despair? Here in this dungeon of despair. When all the time I hold the key that unlocks the door. Huh? Come on, you just got to rise up. Hallelujah. Anytime, anytime, anywhere. You can speak to the rock and the water will come out. Christ the rock that followed them in the wilderness. He's with us right now. He's low. Behold. Behold. It's, it's a declaration of certainty. It's a declaration of revelation. Here's some revelation for you. I'm with you. Always. Even unto the end of the world. Wow. <laughs> wow. The accompanying of, of God, the Holy Ghost, his eyes upon the righteous and his ears open to the prayer. Those who, this righteous nation that keeps his truth, are, they're allowed to enter into this place 
that before man could not have access to called the holies of holies, which is the absolute otherness from the world. Holiness is defined by absolute opposite, absolute otherness from the world. To be able to integrate into the holies of holies, you have to be willing to be absolutely opposite, other, transcendent, other from the world. The father just opened up the door and said, come on in. He said to everybody, come on in and gaze. Come on in and stare. Come on in and have a good look over here. He said to everyone, he didn't withhold from anybody, to the Scythian, the most evil people on the face of the earth. He says to the Scythian, you can come on in, just like the sanctified priesthood of the Kohen. Kani. Pretty radical stuff, ain't it? The school of the Spirit should be a very sacred realm to us. We should be wanting, we should be wanting to learn how to do this better than to learn the skill sets that we learn to be able to do well in our jobs to ultimately make for ourselves riches in this life. Father's given us an opportunity to have a greater skill set and to have a greater wealth should we give ourselves to the instruction of the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of truth. And we begin to recognize, unless you believe, you should not be established. You're going to have to believe that the Holy Ghost is here to teach you. You're going to have to believe that you're on an expedited process. Not sitting around for 50 years in the church waiting for something to happen. People sit around for 50 years waiting for something to happen. Faith never got activated. They continually live in doubt. They continually question God. They continually second guess God. Huh? And the, are you listening to me? Yes. It's just time to just sell out. I'm yours, God. I'm going to move like you move. I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to have your boldness. I'm going to have your confidence. I'm going to learn your way. Here I am. I'm going to open up the Bible. I'm going to get it step by step. I don't need to go to a conference on how to prophesy. I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to listen to your word. I'm going to receive of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be integrated into the local church because Father ordained the local church for you to get in, not a conference to learn how to prophesy. He didn't ordain for that. He didn't ordain that. He ordained in the local church. Uh, in the local church, he said, I put prophecy. In the local church, I put that anointing. I put those gifts of the Spirit. In the local church, I placed miracles and gifts of healing. Hallelujah. For us, so Hallelujah. This is the school of the Spirit. It's not some wild-eyed, fanciful thing that you, some magical, mystical thing that you do. It's very practical relationship with God that wants truth, that wants the real thing, doesn't want a fake thing, not looking for a shortcut, wants his cut, and that's it. Are you with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, just day. And when I say his cut, we're, we mean the covenant because that's what a covenant means, cut. We want his cut, his covenant. Lutz the pioneer. It's in, and he's given it. None of us have to earn it. Now, there we go. That's a tough one. None of us have to earn it. We receive. Hallelujah. And then we just encourage ourselves. We can encourage ourselves in the love of God for us, how he loves us, <laughs> what he's done for us, who we are in him. You walk around, and the first place you get, the first, first person you get to give prophecy and word of knowledge to is yourself. Amen. The first place you get to practice in a wonderful, safe, uh, you know, realm. You get to practice discerning of spirits for you. Hallelujah. You talk about safe. You talk about not feeling threatened. You're the only, you're going to be the only critiquer. Hallelujah. And, that, and if you do it right, and you've got the Word of God there, and you're giving yourself to the Word of God, and you're coming with the right heart and sitting before this, the, 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 the Lord in the assembly of the saints where His giftings go forth through His apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, everything now that you need, you're being filled up with. You're being equipped with. You're being perfected just by the participation of it all. Hallelujah. Every time you lift your hands and begin to worship and participate with God and begin to touch heaven, I don't, I mean, what? I think it's idolatry to, 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 to worship and not touch heaven. I think it's idolatry. I you supposed to worship with an attitude of, Lord, I want to touch you. I desire you with my soul and with my spirit. I seek you, O oh God. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, I, I, there's nobody ever, no one ever interrupted me or made me feel awkward in the least little bit crying out to God during worship time because they want to touch heaven. Because that's what it's about. It's, it, it's, about the, it's about the time where a whole fire is lit and whole burnt offerings going up and smoke. And, and it's a smell. Hallelujah. Sweet smell. A fragrance. <laughs> the real things are happening. Things are moving around, shifting around. Things are being consumed. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's worship. 
Praise God. An interaction. If anyone, if anyone wants to come near to me, as close as you can possibly get, this is the Hebrew word is karev, as close as you can possibly get, let him come to the door of the tabernacle with his offering. Huh? Which is another word. It's a derivative word of, of karev, which is korban. Bring, bring that deepest connection of that which belongs to the deepest part of the midst of you, which that's what it means, it's the midst of you, that will allow you to draw the nearest you can possibly get to someone. Huh? The only person in this place, there's two people in this place that I am willing to get really, really close to right now. One of them is Anne, because of who she is. And the other is Ruthanna, because she is who she is. The rest of you, I'm not going to get that close to you. We're going to have a space. We're going to have a space. We're going to have a personal space. Praise God. We all need that. We'll invade that a little bit with a, with a hug under the, under the anointing. Praise God with a holy kiss. But the Lord's saying, you can come and get as close to me as you possibly can with this gift, with this offering, with this touch. This is how he defined worship. This is Leviticus chapter 1. Uh -huh. You know what Leviticus is? In, he, in the Hebrew language, Leviticus is Vayikra. Vayikra. And what it means is, and he called out. That's what the Lord is doing. And he called out. That's, how, that's, what, the name, that's what the name in Hebrew of the book of Leviticus says. It's, and he called out. And he called out to man, come to me. Does anybody want to come over here to me? Come stand at the door. Who's the door? Jesus. Now he doesn't say, come and get as close as you can possibly get. He says, come on in and become one. He says, step on in here in this realm, in me. I'm in you. People, receive it. Receive it. It will give you confidence. It will give you boldness. Now you know who you are. Now you know what you're supposed to do. Then all of a sudden you hear, even as the Father sent me, even so send I you. Uh -huh. Now you're hearing it. You got a miracle birth just like he got a miracle birth. You're sent with a miracle ministry just like he was sent. Oh, Paul, I'll tell you. Hatan in the epitale. Lanzade in the Now, you everywhere, you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. You looking for somebody who's sick to get healed. Are you sick? Yeah. I'm an investigator. Are you sick? Are you feeling right? You know, you don't have to be that quite that, you know, invasive. But you notice somebody sniffling. Hey, in the name of Jesus, I command those sniffles go off of you. What'd you say? Why well, does no one see you suffer? I said, in the name of Jesus. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying I got power. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was with this Apache Indian one day. I mean, he's a real Apache, okay? And just full culture, everything, you know, long hair, and, you know, evil eye. And, 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 uh, and, you know, his name was Sonny. And he was making his transition to go back to his tribal homeland. And he's having a hard time of it. And he's like in his 50s, and, and, he, and his, his horse died. And he came and he said, man, my horse died. And he had a very special horse, and the Apaches are really important, and the horse is important to me. His horse was named Sitting Bull. He <laughs> 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 uh, said, my horse died. And I said, Sonny, did she know I was a holy man? And we're not talking about Olson here. This is their deity, Olson. So we're talking about the living God. Olson's a demon. We're talking about the living God. You know, he just looks at me. He said, my horse is dead. My horse died. I said, well, where is he at? Take me to him. He took me to his horse. Sure enough, his horse dead, just solid over there. Just. <laughs> I walked over to his horse and I said, get up. Horse hopped up. See, when we understand we've got a boldness and we've got an authority and it's all about proving who God is, about being in charge. I'm in charge. Your horse is dead, no problem. You can't meet your horse is dead. I got you, I got you, I got your cure. But you it's not oh, oh let's pray. Let's pray. Oh God. <laughs> Lord comfort Sonny in this hour. His uh, horse is dead. And Lord, give him a better horse. Or or to get down on your knees and oh God. You know, if it's be possible for you, Lord, and your love and mercy. I know a horse doesn't mean much. 
and nothing's going to happen. You've not been in the school of the Spirit that give you boldness. You've not been in the, spirit, the school of the Spirit that gave you identity. You've not been in the school of the Spirit that has sent you out with, as his ambassador with his proof, with his proof to provide to a lost and dying world. <laughs> and it's all centers around the gift of faith. Learning the gift of faith. Learning the function of faith. Learning when faith rises up in you and you just know it. You know it. You know what I mean? You, you, it, this will work. This is going to work. People used to, uh, and fortunately I've been around folks who were right there with A.A. A. Allen. You know, I, I, got, I got to meet A.A. A. Allen's son. I got to be around other ministers who were with A.A. A. Allen and had very personal contact. You know, A.A. A. Allen would walk out and say, uh, you know, these things really boisterous. Hey, if the Lord doesn't heal him, the, open up these blind eyes here tonight, then everything that I say, you can count it as a lie and the gospel's not real. What people don't know is three hour, two, three hours earlier, A.A. Allen already knew what was going to happen. The Lord already told him what was going to happen. One blind eye tonight. And two, and, you know, just went through the list. This is what's going to happen. So he walked out with the cards from heaven. Huh? This gift of faith. Now, not to say that it was just locked in like that, but that's really, by and large, as I've been privileged to be mentored by other people who function who have functioned in greater manifestation of the power of God than I've been, uh, uh, you know, from my own measurement of things. And we've got to watch out with that. We have to watch out with that. But what, just they've been more influential. Let me just say it that way, because I'm going to say nothing against what Father does, because everything he does is perfect. How he's used and used just perfect. And if you're letting him use you fully, then it's just beautiful. That's exactly what's supposed to be going on. And we're not going to diminish that, yeah. all right, or add to it. So look, bottom line of it is, dear people, what I'm saying is the get to faith is a wonderful realm that you want to learn how to function and you want to learn and it is only going to be something that comes as a result of your personal relationship and interaction and hunger and desiring of God and, and being there taught of the word and, and being confident in who he's made you and certain about what he's equipped you to be and do in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the only place that this is going to grow. Man, when that get to faith comes, hey? You know, Ruthianne was telling me about it the other day. And this is a girl she's reaching out to, him, believing God's going to change her life. And she was going to the doctor because she had to have ACL surgery. It wasn't ACL. And, um, and immediately, immediately, Ruthianne had to get to faith. She said, you don't have to have ACL surgery. He's totally healed. She goes to the doctor, and, and, and the girl was just shocked. She goes to the doctor. She finds out, you don't need ACL surgery. You're, there's nothing wrong with your knee. It's, 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 it's fine. Well, the girl's just in shock. Now she doesn't even want to get around Ruth. She's been close friends with Ruth. Now she says, where's Ruth? Now, uh, spotlight's on me. Spotlight's on me. Whoa. Where's a shadow that I can get in for a little while? Because I'm not ready to respond to this yet. I get over here in a shadow. I don't want to get back over there in the light. It's just too, it's too weird. I can't deal with that. Father wants us to confront men's needs. He wants to confront us to confront Satan's strongholds. Yes. And we can't do that as long as we're cowering in the dar darkness and the shadows. Huh? Uh -huh. Now listen to me. Some people might look and say, wow, that's a bright light. Well, from your perspective, it might look like a bright light. But you get over in the holies of holies and you might see a shadow, an angel of darkness that comes as a minister of light. Huh? You need to be in the right perspective. Don't be looking from an earthly perspective of trying to decide what, whether it's good or bad. Get in the holy, holy where the light is brightest. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing. He, he's come to protect us. He's come to keep us. He's a, he's a hedge about us. He's more than a hedge. He's a, hey, we've been baptized in the fire. We've been baptized in the hedge. And... You know, this, this book that I wrote on the unlimited authority of God, I, I want to encourage you. I wrote this book because I believe that Nepal is going to be the crossroads of the world of the very near future. It's at the crossroads of the world right now. It's at the crossroads of the world, but it's going to be the crossroads of the world because they're going to build a superhighway from China down into India. The majority of the population on the earth is going to be in China and India combined. Major trade, some of the, one of the major trade routes is going to be between China and India. They opened up, you know, we, we started prophesying. I mean, God made it such a, so real to me. 
you know, and I first was seated with it through things that I heard from T.L. Osborne. Then I was seated with it. Then also in things that I heard from the Back to Jerusalem movement, the things that were prophesied back in the, in the 40s during the first part of the Cultural Revolution, having been so touched by what God did through Watchman Nee. And, in, and we begin to describe, describe, describe in the clarity, say those trade routes are going to be opened up again. And lo and behold, sure enough, in, nine, in, in, in 2007, they began to open up the great trade routes. They had been building the superhighway for the 2008 Olympics in China. And so to get everything all ready for the, to make China look that much more wealthy, that much more, you know, advancing economically and in trade and commerce, they opened up those old ancient trade routes going through, right out through Tajikistan, the, the, the northern one, the central one, the southern trade routes. Pretty radical stuff, eh? Pretty radical stuff. All that is going on in, in, these, in these last days. Well, I see Nepal being one of those primary places. And so, because it's what the Lord showed me. So the impact that the Lord wanted me to have in Nepal was to say, guys, get ready for greater signs. Get ready for greater wonders. I personally believe that 2015, this is going to be a time, a year of great exploits for those who know their God. We will be strong. What is a description of being strong? The Word of God abides in you. And you strong. So you defeated Satan at every point. So he can't stop me. Suddenly the Lord opens up my eyes and says, you know what, as soon as I'm ready to use you, as soon as I'm ready to do some great things through you, what happens is Satan comes along knowing it, he comes to resist you, and I allow him to tempt you, but not above what you're able, and then you, you because you're so stupid, Mark, and not paying attention, you let, you let yourself fall prey to that thing. You get into the argument of it, or you get into the discouragement of it, or you get into the doubt of it, huh? Yeah. And now it hinders the flow. Because Satan was able to touch something in a realm of the Spirit that stops you from being what God has purposed us to be at Christ Jesus. Jesus said, Satan comes and has nothing in me. He can't touch me. He can't hinder me. He can't in any way uh, stand against me or resist me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Father in the school of the Spirit is teaching us how not to be touched. God's got some people in 2015. They're going to be strong. And I'm telling you, we've been prepared in this day. I'm not only... I mean, I really began to hear it the other night. You know, Ruth Ann was just talking to me about some things that the Lord made real to her. And, and as she did, man, I started getting hit. I started getting a download from heaven. Because that's the way the anointing works. As the anointing goes, it's coming out of someone else. If you sense it of the anointing, boom, it activates in you. Huh? It's the water, always act, the water of the Spirit. No matter where it comes from, activates a wellspring, activates a river. It does. And so I want you to give yourself to reading this booklet called The Un uh, Unlimited Authority of God because it's really about faith. It's about moving in faith. It's about activating faith. And it's about the authority of the kingdom of God. You know, and it's got the works of the kingdom, the kingdom revealed, the power of his might, the revelation of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. Chapter 2, the authority of the spirit of God, which is Jesus the baptizer, co-inheritors in an unlimited gift. God dwells in us, strengthened by the spirit, the utterance of authority, greater works. Then chapter 3. I mean, you're already, you're already soaring now. You know, you got through that. Chapter 3, the authority of the Word of God. Speak in the Word, okay? We speak the Word of God. God confirms His Word, the testimony of the Word. Then chapter 4, the authority of the name of Jesus. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, miracles in the name of Jesus, faith that is by the name of Jesus. And then chapter 5, the authority of the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood of Jesus, sins washed away, the ability to repent, the altar of God, communion with the blood, the authority of the covenant, eternal redemption, heaven's currency, the love, healing, uh, uh, yeah, the love, healing in the blood. And then that now, chapter 6, the authority of sonship. Christ's sonship, the glory of the son, manifested sons. Ha <laughs> ha. The authority of faith. This is just abbreviated. I, and you want to ask me more? Oh, I, got a, I got a whole, I got an expounder living on the inside of me. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. This book is actually about this thick from the floor up to here. It's about this thick and about that wide. I mean, I'm telling you, the expounder is on the inside. And what happens is for me, it's revelation. I wrote out a revelation. I sit down and just wrote this. I wrote it. I just wrote it as fast as my little fingers could type. I just wrote it. 
I didn't have study, nothing, research, nothing. This is in me. I just wrote this. I want it to become in you. It's faith. It's, it's the cornerstone of faith. It's where faith activates every gift that there is. Faith activates every interaction that exists with God. Outside of faith, there, you can't please him. You can't come to him. You can't know him. It, 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 faith is that means by which we are able to say he exists. Yes. Uh-huh. And does not exist out there somewhere. He is here right now. He is existing right now with me. Hallelujah. I'm on J.K. Steve. And I read the, oh, as soon as I read the first six, I read the last one. And then the authority of faith. The authority of faith. Great faith. Faith produces miracles. The hearing of faith. Believing for the impossible. The spirit of faith. The word of faith. The authority of faith with the authority of the word. You know, and praise God. I mean, a dear friend of mine, a, a dear friend of mine heard these things. And, 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 you know, the Lord told me to take him with me and, and just hook him up with me j- just for a couple of meetings and then just say, go. And he left, and he's running with the banner of believing for the impossible. That's what the ministry that he hooked up with me is what we t- t- entitled it, believing for the impossible. And he said, can I have it? I said, it's yours. And now, right now, think about it. About six months ago, all of a sudden, supernatural things started being able to be worked together to where that he could begin to start planning for a crusade in um, Havana, Cuba. And then, lo and behold, two weeks ago, all of a sudden, an unpredictable, unbelievable, people mad and stomping around about it, door opened up. I'm very happy. You sitting there thinking in your own little noggin about USA of America instead of the kingdom of God, you're going to be all messed up. What happened? A door opened up for the gospel to go to Cuba. Huh? Huh? Believing for the impossible. We're going to see signs, these wonders, miracles. Huh? Because Obama opened up an agreement that nobody else would, all the conservatives and all, whatever. Give me a break, people. We want doors to open up around here. We want opportunities to step in there and say, hello, Jesus has come and died and rose again and lives right now and present here to prove himself for you. That's what this is about. This is how we're supposed to be praying. We're not supposed to be praying according to the CNN dictates, according to the conservative party dictates, according to the Republican party dictates. Huh? Give me a break. God's people are going to have to get themselves some discernment and wake up and understand the living in politics. Yeah. yeah. It'll warp you. It'll mess you all up. You'll think wrong. You'll act wrong. You'll believe wrong. We want to. The only way we act right and believe right and move right when we get a hold of the word of God and understand why we're here anyways and what the purpose is of the kingdom of God are all about. America is a fleeting moment in time. This nation is just like all other nations that rise and will fall away. It's going to be right there when the, if, it's, if it were to exist, it would be right there among those lists of those who will be absolutely dissolved and, and, and crushed and smashed and become dust. To be remembered no more. It's the kingdom of God that we live for. And the only way we're going to even begin to feel it and get it is we're going to have to get out of the human realm. I said, we're going to have to, I said, in Jesus' name, it's time to hear. It's time that the people of God hear. Get out of religion. You know, it's become a phrase. People are religious about being religious. Huh? Or religious about not being religious, rather. It's time people start hearing. It's time you start getting on. Looky here. God's not impressed with what you think you know. He's not. He's not impressed by what you think you know. He's not. He's impressed by a surrendered heart. And the result of that is going to be a glory glow. He's impressed, he's impressed by the glory. He's impressed by the glow. He's impressed by the fire. Huh? Huh? Who's going to dwell with everlasting burnings? Did you read that? Who's going to dwell in the midst of the everlasting burnings? Who's going to dwell in the midst of that fire where God himself dwells in the consuming fire? You just read that out of Isaiah. Huh? Hallelujah. Uh, the righteous, those who are upright in heart. It's like who's going to ascend to the holy hill of God? Those with a clean heart and pure. Those with pure heart and clean hands. Hallelujah. Purusada de Efrete. We're going to learn righteousness. We're going to understand that the school of the Spirit is about learning to walk right. 
The school of the Spirit is about learning to live right. That definition is only found within the character and ways of God Almighty. That's what it's about. Out of that then, out of that then, a depth, a depth of relationship and fellowship and communion begins to, to mature in our lives. And out of that, huh? And all through that, actually. It's all through that. At every part is having freely received, freely give. I've got a commission. It's Christ in me. He's the healer. Somebody said, why are you so excited about healing? Because the healer's with me. He's ex the healer's excited about healing. Why are you, why are you excited about miracles? Because the miracle worker is excited about miracles. Uh, why are you excited about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Because that's what Father's excited about. That's the promise of the Father. He said, go tarry in Jerusalem, and you shall receive the promise of the Father. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Amen. The promise of the Father. Am I going to start, I'm going to start being less than excited about the promise of the Father? Hallelujah. Borosiah, Hamasetera, Tushapai. Luravusi Vikaname. Listakonamai. Astaparate. Hallelujah. And having ascended up into heaven huh, and received the promise of the Father, he has poured forth that which you both see and hear. Who, being, who, um, having ascended up, being exalted, and having received the promise of the Father. Sutaranaya, prokstai, hidabasale, the giving of the unlimited expressions and dimensions of His Holy Spirit, to where that we receive a Holy Spirit and our Holy Spirit that we receive fr from Him is now united with the Holy Spirit. A new heart and a new spirit. My heart's joined unto Him. I can may now understand the things if I'm willing to participate. I want you to walk out of here tonight with one word in the school of the Spirit. Out of all the instructions, walk out with one word. Participate. Participate with what God's doing. Participate with love. You'll love more. Don't participate with hate. I don't care who's hating. Don't, don't come under the bondage of it. Don't participate with strife. I had one time I was in a situation and somebody said, well, if Mark's got them to defend himself, I'm going to defend him. It's pretty funny. I have no idea. I don't need to defend myself. I have no unction to defend myself. If I get an unction to defend myself, I'm telling you right now, I'm sure that we'll do a good job. <laughs> Spirit of the Lord, I'll, because I'll, I'll rely on the Spirit of God to come on me just like he came on Samson. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we don't have that, we don't want none of it. Are you with me? Yeah. Huh? Oh, Mark's not going to defend himself. I'm going to defend him. Listen, I got Papa defending me, and so do you. You don't need to defend yourself. And when you get over there, and now you're just living. Now I only, see, I've given myself over. I've consecrated myself to that which he consecrated me to have, to only move by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I won't move by the inspiration of the lust of the flesh. I'll resist it. I'll deny it. I'll say no to it. I won't move by the inspiration of the pride of life. I won't move by it. I won't move by the inspiration of the lust of the eye. I will not allow it. It's not to say that I'm not stirred by it. I won't allow it. I'll shut it down. It will not work in my members. No. It, it keeps me. It's unrighteous. It keeps me from the ways of all that God wants to do in my life. So that now I'm consecrated over here. The only thing I'm moved by is by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when he moves me, I speak. And when he doesn't move me, I'm just quiet. Say like, whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to engage. I, I'm going I'm to get involved in the hugs. I'm going to get involved in the kisses. I'm going to get involved in the love. I'm going to get all involved in the blessing. People say, why ain't I blessed? Because you don't bless. You haven't learned righteousness. Huh? You want to have, you, you, why isn't, why can't I, why isn't it that the anointing's not flowing to me? Because you're not hooked up. Because <laughs> it's flowing all the time. <laughs> well, I want to be hooked up. I'm praying all the time. Well, you don't listen to the pastor. You don't serve the ministry. You're not hooked up. And nobody need to tell you that. Just start reading the Bible again, and God will slap you with the word. He'll smile. The righteous will smite you right there in your seat while you're reading this next round. Are you listening to me? He'll show you. You got to get hooked up and serve the anointing if you want to get connected to the flow that comes down from the head. <laughs> and then and, and it's applied to every connected part. That's what the scripture says. It's applied to every kustotona maya. Alamogeshikaya. Ephesians 4.16, right? Talane kateya. 
Mongadeshi Kina Katoya. You know what that is for me? You know what Batakonia and Amasatea is? It is this for me, and I'm going to close with this. It is the means by which I connect with the Holy Spirit to say the next thing, to move in the next thing. It's the means by which I connect with the Holy Spirit to be prepared to do the next thing He wants me to do. Huh? It, it, if, if I'm getting ready, it, it's just it's, it's something you, you're, you, can, you God the Holy Spirit will train us. He'll train us. He'll give us holy habits. And it, it doesn't matter if it's a, it, it, I don't have to think consciously think of it. If it's a, if I'm getting ready to go to a meeting, some right around about an hour to an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, somewhere I'll just say between an hour and two hours, usually sometimes it's more, but just on average, sometimes between an hour and two hours, will hit me. And then there'll be a song. I'll be singing a song. I'll be there. Uh, usually it's going to be a holy, holy, holy song. It's not, it's not. It's not coming out of me consciously. It's not something I'm doing. It's something that the Holy Spirit is doing through me. It's, a, it's an overflow. It's the realms of heaven. You want that. It's the school of the Spirit. What's he doing? He's preparing me to speak. Not what I'm thinking, but what he's thinking. He's pre preparing me to do. Not in my own strength, but in a boldness and a confidence and authority. Somebody says, you know, people, you know I, 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 was, I was at one, one place in my life and I thought, you know, I look at people under that authority of the Spirit of the Lord. I say, how do you feel now? And, you know, I thought, maybe, they're, maybe it looks so threatening that they're afraid to say that they don't feel better. Because I know what that, I know I can, I, I can feel that, that authority. I'm not upset at anybody. I'm not challenging anybody. It's just an authority. Now, how do you feel? Is the pain still there? Well, I dare not say no. I, I, dare, not, I dare not say it is. But I, we want to walk in authority, in every area of authority to where as soon as we speak, it has to happen. Because why? Father has ordained us to have it. That's what he wants. That's not my will. That's his will. True humility is to be submitted to his will. Therefore, true humility is every time I say it for the glory of Jesus Christ, for the glory of the Son and of the Father, it will happen. Huh? That's true humility. Uh -huh. That's true meekness and low, lowliness. Not to do my will, but to do His will. To live only for His will. Hallelujah. Is something that is activated by the Holy Spirit so that you and I can hook up with those things that He wants to give to us so that we are fully equipped to do whatever it is that we are now going to be faced uh, with the responsibility to do or given an opportunity to do. And I pray that you see that all throughout the day. You're praying for divine appointments. And that you just don't fall into the snares of the enemy. It's the first big part of learning to walk with the Spirit. Holy Ghost, because he's going, hey, that's a snare right there. Don't step in that one. Come over here. And, you know, to start off with, we don't hear very well. So the Holy Ghost says, that's a snare. And we go, where? And we're down <laughs> in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that. There. That one. Don't fall in that one. <laughs> I know whereof I speak huh, for having fallen into the snare. But at any rate, praise God for maturity and, and growth and the ability to hear him. And those snares are just, those snares are things like people, you know, having a bad attitude, being, you know, things happening, you know, where that and we, we feel that we've been mistreated or whatever, you know. So I said, well, you know, I, you know, I, you don't know how much all, how much I've done for so and so, and they treated me like this. And well, why don't you enjoy the fellowship of his sufferings? They treat Papa like that all the time. I thought you wanted to know him, that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Ha 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 ha! You got to turn things around, get into the glory. I mean, <laughs> not get into the snare, not get into the omies. Come, take my yoke upon. Jesus said, "Take my yoke upon yourself, to live for His will, to fellowship in His sufferings, to bear the reproaches wherewith they reproach Him." And I'm always having to take Father's reproaches. Father, I'm always. You know, I say, Father, I'm always having to take your reproaches. And the little Lord looks at us and says, well, you need to enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and, they, and there's no, don't you worry. And listen, here's what I've learned. This one, this one I've learned. Father never leaves somebody hanging out to dry, bearing his reproaches, taking up his cross. Uh-uh. No. 
Because he causes his grace to rest upon you. When you persecuted for righteousness sake. When you persecuted and you take it right. When you persecuted and you don't threaten. But you commit yourself to God. I mean, just to ask Peter. He causes his grace to dwell upon you. I know it firsthand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. And most folks don't even know what that is. It. And what does that even mean? And none righteous. No, not one. <laughs> Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Because I believe in my heart unto righteousness. Hallelujah. The covenant said he bore my sins in a in his own body, that now I, being cut off from sin, might live unto righteousness. See, hallelujah. He who knew no sin became the sin offering that I might be made, the, born the righteousness of God. Amen. See, I'm established in the faith now. Now I can grow properly. Praise God. I'd hate to be, you know, I'd hate to grow improperly. Have one arm that's fully normal and one that looks like a little baby. <laughs> I better stop. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we've had, we got too many monstrous, flaky-looking things going on in the church that is discrediting and bringing a reproach to the moving of the Holy Ghost and bringing shame to the name of Jesus. But Father God, a people who are do devoted to his glory, devoted to his cause, that want his glory and his majesty to be revealed in the earth, and that is beautiful. It may, look a little, it may look like a madman to start off with, but as soon as all of a sudden the leprosy comes, comes, comes peeling off their body, huh, they may look like babblers, but as soon as all of a sudden the blind eyes begin to open up and the crippled babies begin to walk, I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody remembers anything about the babbler because the majesty and the glory has just brought freedom, has just brought release to the dearest thing to their heart. Mm-mm-mm. I'm praying, I'm believing God. I just, I have such a stirring compassion for little babies who are sick and those little babies that are confined to wheelchairs and confined to a, a bed of affliction that are laying in the hospital with orphans' diseases and can't be cured. It's time God's people begin to get bold and move. Now, I want to tell you, participate. The one word, participate. See people, lay hands on them. Pray the prayer of faith. Don't just pray, oh, God, we pray if you can hear us now. Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> you got to speak with authority. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going to teach you how to speak with authority, not like a scribe or a Pharisee. Oh, God, I thank you that I'm not as this public. You're not going to speak like that. You could have stayed in my lombra de fiteo. God's going to teach you how to say to the moon, stand still. To the sun, don't move. In Jesus' mighty name. He's going to teach you how to speak as Samuel did, and where not one word will fall to the ground. Yes. Hallelujah. Just participate with what he said to do. Of course, we've got to know that he said it in his word, and we've got to know that it's to us. And I'm going to tell you right now, read his word, and I assure you it is to you. It's what Father wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, is there anybody want to ask me a question? <laughs> Anybody want to receive? <laughs> right from heaven. Vayekra. And he called. Vayekra Yehoah and the Lord. And Yehoah he called. Ha, Sibeti Kashilo. Ha, Hambrase. He says, come on in. He says, come on in. Hala Siteyane. Ombrakste. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that gives to us the wisdom and the insight. To recognize those things, Holy Spirit, that you are doing. And only do them with you. Father, we thank you for the wisdom and the maturity to be able to recognize things that are not of you. The things that are contrary to your love and your joy and your peace and to refuse them. The things that are contrary to your righteousness and your way and your holiness and not allow them. So, Father God, that in every way, our emotions and our spirit and our thinking, Father, will come into perfect submission to you. So that all that we do hear and all that we do receive and all that we do function in and move is just that pure flow from heaven. That pure flow from heaven. Hallelujah. Tola and that, Father, continually, we would just be having our, ha, 
senses exercised. Hallelujah. Our emotions exercised. <laughs> 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 Woo! Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha. Woo, ha, 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 ha. With the good things of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No sight I tie to mine and I. That our soul will only desire holy emotions and we'll be having them. And that our soul will only desire uh, those pleasures which are at your right hand and we'll be in continually enjoying them. Amen. In Jesus' name. In the name of the living God, Christ Jesus. In the name of the living God, Christ Jesus. I charge you in Jesus' name. Be full of the Holy Ghost. I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit. I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yield yourself, your members, as weapons unto God in Jesus' name. I command you in Jesus' name. Live in the fire. Live in the glory. <laughs> Live in the beauty of his love. I'm going to, one last verse of scripture. I'm going to just send you home with this. Actually, this is what I thought that I was going to minister on tonight. And so, I, I, you know, I've got to release at least to send you home with it. And I just want you to notice something here in, in Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 7. I want you to notice that when the water is flowing, the water of heaven is flowing, that the results of the signs, wonders, and miracles of heaven are being revealed. Verses 5 and 6. Verse 7 says, And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of dragons where, where each lay shall there instead be now the grass with reeds and rushes because it's just a well-watered area. What's happening now? Verse 5. The eyes of the blind then are open. The ears of the deaf are unstopped. They that are lame shall leap like the deer. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For, the wilderness shall for in the wilderness shall waters break out in streams in the desert. There is a river. There is a river. Hallelujah. There is a bubble up. Hallelujah. That produces joy and peace and life. There is a river. This is the power and working of the Holy Ghost. This spake ye at the Holy Ghost. And wherever that water flows, I'm going to tell you right now, the glory of God's divine grace and life-giving power is going to have an impact. There used to be a song in the Ealing Revival. It says, God is moving by Spirit. Moving in all the earth, signs and wonders, when God's moving, move, O oh Lord, through me. That's it. Our cry, the moving of the Spirit. When God's moving, there's signs and wonders. When the rivers of living God, water are flowing, the blind see, the crippled leap, like the heart, like the deer, the deaf hear. The mute sing. Mm -mm -mm. Father, we thank you for the great and mighty things that you're going to do. The healing streams of heaven that will flow here in this year, 2015. Hallelujah. The great signs and wonders, the great shaking that will happen in your church as you begin to rearrange things. That's what Father is going to do. Father is going to, there's going to be a great shaking in the church and Father is going to rearrange and reorganize things in the church. Hallelujah. For his glory. Hallelujah. So that Jesus himself is being exalted and Father is getting glorified in his only begotten Son and his church is fully revealing who he is. Amen. And I have purposed to be right in the big middle of that good thing that God is doing. And I, I pray in Jesus' name that every one of you have the same heart and mind. And we'll just do this thing because Father will give us the sufficiency. We're not sufficient for ourselves. We don't have the capacity within our own being. If we look to ourselves, forget about it, you're lo you lose. But if you grab a hold of faith and recognize you can do nothing of yourself, but now Father has filled you with every good thing. Filled you with all of his power and glory. Now just go do it. Yeah. Amen. And do it and, and participate. Pray for everybody that needs, pray for everything that moves that will, let you, let, that will allow you. If they got some need. Yes. I just pray if they're sick, pray for them. Believe they'll be healed. Say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Say, what kind of prayer should I pray? I want you to pray the prayer of faith. Huh? 
the prayer of faith that is derived from the Word of God. You say, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Get his name on it. It don't have to be a long prayer. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't even have to lay hands on somebody. It works for me. I text somebody to say, I'm sick. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I get a text back, hey, I'm healed. Yeah, it works electronically. It works. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It works via email across to another continent. In Jesus' name, I command you to be healed now. Smiley face. <laughs> Ah, hallelujah. And they didn't open it to the next day. Healed. Just do that. Authority. God's given you authority. To the, as many as believe. Everyone who would receive. Freely you have received. Will you receive? Freely will you receive? Everybody would believe. Those who will receive. He gives you the authority to be sons. The sonship is defined as co-inheritor with Jesus. An heir of God. That's not just for the future. That's for right now. Co-inheritor in his ministry. This is God's Father's desire that we'll break past the grievous of doubt and earthly concerns and cares that have kept, held us back from living in this abundance. Freely we have received. He's given to us all things freely. Huh? Shall he not also by him also freely give us all things? If he spared not his own son, if he loved you so much that he spared not his own son. He says to me, Father's talking to me. I'm telling him how this and that and the other thing. He says, listen, if I loved you so much that I spared not my own son for you, Mark, will I not also by him give you freely everything? And then all you can do is just start whining and crying and say, Father, forgive me. Huh? Yeah. Fall down on your knees. I just fall down on my knees and I worship him and say, yes, Bob. Yes, Father, forgive me for my doubt and my unbelief. Forgive me for my complaint. Uh, listen, I don't care where you're at, what you're going through. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a fiery furnace to prepare you so that your faith will be found in praise and honor and glory. So go ahead and worship him in the midst of the fire. Just walk around in the midst of the fire with your hands lifted up. Uh, like the three Hebrew children. Amen. And then you'll be, in a te you'll be, you'll be part of that testimony as well. Amen. Will everybody stand with me? Lift your hands just lift your hands towards heaven. I command you right now in Jesus' name, be healed. If you're listening to me by the web right now, or if you're listening to me on the YouTube, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Right now, be filled. In everybody standing in this place, touched by the power of the living God. Strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. The authority of heaven is yours. Now live it. Jesus' name. Amen. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. If you want a greater amount of love to flow through you, participate. You, you want greater invention of healing function in your life? Pray for everybody.